peat bogs on Exmoor and Dartmoor have been drying out because people dug ditches in them um, to drain the land to increase the amount of grazing you could get off the land and also to uh, facilitate peat cutting. So all of these moors have been cut over for domestic fuel use by people who lived out on these moors. Very hard work, they don't do it anymore, but we have this legacy of those two things. The, the impact of the ditches on climate change is, is a very interesting one. What happens is the ditches cause the peat to dry out and when peat's dry, it oxidises with the um, in the oxygen in the air, turns to CO2 and simply disappears. So keeping the peat wet by blocking the ditches up um, stops that from happening. Peatlands are really important in storing carbon. Damaged peatlands actually release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But if we actually re-wet the uh, peatland, then they can start to absorb carbon dioxide as the bog accumulates and also then it stores carbon as well. The work we do up here on the moors encourages uh, a natural system. So before the ditches were dug, when it rained up here, um, the water would just slowly make its way across the surface and eventually end up in the river. Put the ditches in and it's like having a bath with the, the, with the plug out and the taps running. So the water's going into the bath and straight down the plug all the time. What we do up here is we put the plug back into the bath so that the bath fills up, but it's a bit of a leaky plug, so eventually some of the water goes over the overflow, a little bit goes down through the plug hole, but it's a full system keeping the, the river system charged up. What we have here is a wooden dam that we built yesterday with peat um, put up behind it. As the machine comes in on the side and just takes a bit of peat from each side of the bank, moves it onto here and forms this pool. This will fill up over the next couple of days and then the water will it move across the moors, out back across that way onto the bog, rather than down the ditch. So that's, that's the end result, that's job done. If we get water going out back onto the moor, that's what we're trying to achieve. The Environment Agency is really interested in this project because it, it deals with so many different aspects of our work. It helps with flood risk, with water quality and also with habitats. And also we're really interested in trying to reduce emissions as well and this project helps with that too. This is a natural bog pool that I've brought you down to which is what we're trying to achieve with those pools that we saw uh, higher up on the moor where we blocked the ditches up. And what we get in them very quickly is a fantastic crop of sphagnum moss. Uh, here's some here, so you can see it's uh, a semi-aquatic plant and look how much water it can hold. And this is the most amazing thing about this plant, let it drip for a while and you can still squeeze out huge volumes of water. So we can get a carpet of this to grow across the moors instead of the less interesting purple moor grass and soft rushes. Just think how much water we can store up there. When that water is slowly uh, seeping through the, the bog, what happens is it actually takes out the nutrients and it also takes out the organic carbon. And so the water that goes into the rivers is actually of a better water quality. By blocking the ditches up and re-wetting the moors, and then you're encouraging back all of the other plants that you want to see here, the bog mosses, the more interesting cotton grasses and deer grass and all the other things that should be out here. If you've got all those in place, then you um, create the right environment for birds to live up here again and for dragonflies in these pools. So what we're doing is just increasing the amount of biodiversity by blocking the ditches up. A million tonnes of CO2 potentially is stored on these moors could disappear into the atmosphere if we don't do this work. If we do do this work, the bonus is that not only are we stopping that loss of CO2, by the process of photosynthesis, them using the energy from the sunlight, they take CO2 out of the atmosphere, turn it into peat and add to the store. So every year an extra millimetre of peat grows across these moors when they're wet and healthy. If you work all that out you get one millimetre per hectare, that's a tonne per hectare per year. So every hectare we restore is an extra tonne every year of CO2 out of the atmosphere.